back to our, our main topic today, and, and that is uh, our, um, the topic in, in question being the FM, the background, uh, how, how information is, is, is provided uh, to, to you as professional of the built environment, all the project managers, the facility managers, the maintenance people, the estate managers. Um, so, because, you know, I've been involved, if you like, at the front end, where when people like you and others get involved it is normally, unfortunately, much later in the, in the project. So, uh, well, I'm here today to try and get across that there is a better way that this information can be provided to you that's more useful, it's more productive, it's more accessible, and, and basically makes, hopefully, your, your life a little bit easier than it already is. So. How do we do that? So let's start. I will break this into into four four parts. Um, first is what we do now, and I call this the traditional way. In other words, how normally projects are dealt with, and how the information is provided uh, to, to to the owner or to the client at the end of the project. Um, then I'll move on and say, look, I think at number two there is a, there is a better way to do this. There is a more efficient way to do this, and I call this digital approach. Now there's various aspects of digital um, and number three I will go into one of them which is complementary to number two and that is the whole area of, of the building information management BIM, uh, the use of digital twins and the digital data that goes around that. And then finally a very quick look at a, at a, at a project um, that's using a number, it's a live project, that's using an, a number of, of, of these tools uh, to, to manage their project and in particular to manage how the uh, final data is, is, is handed over handed over to the user. So, first of all, a little bit of context, a little bit of background. Unfortunately, our business construction, as you can see here from a McKinsey report, is very near the bottom of, of all of the major industries in the world. And that is despite construction in most advanced countries being 13% at least of, of GDP. It's a huge industry, but its adoption of technology and, and, and tools and systems and processes, unfortunately, is, is, is very, very poor. It's changing, but it's changing very slowly. And in the past 20 years, construction has increased its productivity by 1%, one. Whereas the majority of these people here on this list have a min minimum of 3% and some of them far more than that. So we are being left behind and the end result is there for all of us to see. Over overrun on time, overrun on cost, poor quality and everything else that goes that goes with the built environment. Now, this doesn't apply to every industry in construction. I mean, pharma and oil and gas are, are, are an exception. Um, but most of what we deal with uh, is, is, not, is not very well handled by technology. So what, what, are, what are the problems causing this, you might rightly ask. Uh, well, here's some, there's many of them, but here are a few of them. There's low barriers to entry, meaning basically virtually anyone can, can set up a company, or a construction company or an engineering company. It's, it's, not, it's not that difficult and, and the cost is not that high. Again, unfortunately, we're driven by a, by a, a nature and a, and a culture of low price. You know, people think that low price is the best. And we all know, first of all, it's never the, the lowest price ultimately. Um, and then you end up with all of the associated problems with poor quality and all the rest of it. The contractual structures are not very well aligned for, to the incentives. It, it, it's, a, it's a badly organized business in many ways. And because of that, then the risks, and there are many of them, tend to be passed on or passed down and they end up with smaller companies that are very ill-equipped uh, to deal with, with, with these risks. And then again, we see smaller companies go out of business and that can have a cascade effect. And, and as we know, some very large companies have gone out of business because of this. Right now, in many environments and many countries, um, there is a lack of skilled staff and, and, and certainly COVID has added to this. Um, and that is a problem. And I mean, I'm probably an example of it. There's, there's a, a, an aging uh, population in, in, in the construction industry and, that, and that's another problem. And a lot of this, again, is driven by 
It's not very attractive. Construction is not very attractive to younger people and particularly girls, although that's changing too. And the wages and so on can be and, and conditions can be difficult and, and, and not very good. And then on the on the let's call it, I know there are some many professionals on here today, engineering and architectural. Um, a lot of the time due to client pressures and so on, the design is, is not complete when it goes out to bid. And the coordination is not 100% coordinated. And then because of that, and, and contractors are taken on board, changes have to be made. And because of that, again, client has to change because by the time we start building, this project may have been conceived four or five years ago. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm outlining the, the, the bad bits, if you like. But, uh, but because of that, because it's, it's a huge opportunity, these, these issues are there. Now, so it's a, it's a big business, as I said early on. There are many problems in the industry. So those who can come in and disrupt it and change it and make it more efficient would really uh, reap a, a very great benefit in, in, in getting projects and in, in making money. And digital strategy plays a key role in that, in our opinion. Um, it doesn't mean to say that projects cannot be built the traditional way. Of course they can, and they have been for many hundreds of years. But rarely in today's market is, is it possible to do that without a proper strategy. And, and, and digital pays, plays a key role in that. So just to give you an example of, of what we're going to talk about today, what you know, what what you and professionals like you need at the end of a project is at least this amount of information for, for, for a, a well managed, a well put together operating and maintenance manual. Now, uh, these are headings, but of course, but behind it, all of these on a typical project, there are many thousands and thousands of documents that need need to be put together. They need to be accurate and they need to be accessible and, and, and they need to be capable of being kept up to date by, by you and, and, and people and people like you. Um, but it's rarely that this happens. It's rarely that this all of this information is handed over and it's rarely that it's handed over correctly. And you might ask, well, why is this information so important or so critical? Well, um, facilities and buildings are, are, are much more complex now than they ever were, you know, with security and comms and COVID and, and uh, Internet of Things and so on. And because of that, the amount of data has grown exponentially. I mean, it's not unusual now to see projects, even medium sized projects with literally hundreds, if not thousands of, of files of information and uh, thumbnails, drawings and hard disks and so on and so forth. There are some very important compliance issues and unfortunately you know we've seen some very high profile in, in the public recently of, of things that have gone badly wrong in some cases causing loss of life um, projects that are years and years late and you know five and six times over budget in fact we have one here right now in ireland uh, you know a new children's hospital that's not even half complete and yet it's it's doubled in cost and um and it's 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 already three years late, and, and 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 those figures will get worse. There are key health and safety issues, and of course, you know that comes into um, many other issues, and and that has to be managed and continue to be managed. Um, and rightly, you know, occupants of buildings they're demanding much better environments and much better working conditions. And and one of your colleagues in a, in a previous webinar, you know, went through that in great detail with with the impacts of COVID. And it's not just space, but it's 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 air quality, it's it's fresh air, it's it's people movement, it's you know it's all of this how you get people up and down elevators and so on. Now, on for, again, our business with all of the other issues, it's got it's got a very large carbon footprint, uh, particularly due to concrete. So, climate change, environmental issues, sustainability, energy, that is all going to play a, a, a crucial role from now on. And and as an industry, we must change and we must. We must adapt and adopt a, a new technologies, um, you know, be it, you know, composite timber or a new build and so on and so forth. But we must reduce our, our waste and, and our carbon footprint. And then, of course, there's the whole area of cost, which is which is critical to, to the people who are paying for these projects. I mean, and and the, and the costs sometimes go wildly uh, out, out of budget. And uh, 
uh, this this PowerPoint here will show you. This is, you know, very roughly just to get the, the image across. For every dollar spent on design, there's a, at least, you know, $10 spent on construction. But importantly, depending on the type of building, um, and this can vary, of course, but complicated buildings, I mean, up to $80 uh, can be spent. So 80% of the total life cycle cost is in the operation, maintenance, running of, of, of a facility, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, and if all of what I've been speaking about beforehand is not managed correctly, is not installed correctly, tested correctly, and if the information is not handed over correctly, this, this last item here can, can be greatly impacted. So moving on. So what, what are the major shortcomings? Now I've, I've listed some of them, uh, but hard to believe, but unfortunately, and I've been involved in them recently, many, many projects still hand over the documentation in paper with the, you know, the drawings uh, in, in DWG or DWF or, or PDF on, on a hard drive. But th that is okay. And sometimes my, my clients will say, well, we, we have our information digitally. And you ask, oh yeah, well, and when you look at it, it's basically a scanned copy of a digital, of a PDF file. Okay, that's better, a little bit better than paper, but not much because these documents can't talk to each other, they're not, not linked to the different disciplines of mechanical, electrical, and so on. So now you, you still have the same problem. And in our experience, and my experience definitely, even when you get these documents, uh, if it's in paper, it's very difficult to check it for a start, but they're incomplete, they're inaccurate, difficult to accept, ac access, particularly out in the field or up in the building, and are very difficult to keep current, to keep up to date, if, if it's in just a paper or a, or a digital PDF format. And this is of particular relevance uh, to the people on the call today with the as-built drawings. I mean, a lot of the time, the actual so-called as-built drawings don't reflect the, actual, the site conditions, don't reflect what's hidden. And this only becomes apparent when something goes wrong, which it does. And you and your team can spend an inordinate amount of time trying to find information. If it's in this format, it's very difficult. And uh, and you may find the information once, but then it's taken out perhaps, brought up to the plant room, and it's not seen again. I've rarely seen a proper cause and effect strategy outlined in the handover documentations. In other words, what is installed, where is it, and how is it interconnected? And without that, when uh, things go wrong, it's very difficult to trace the problem, link the problem and fix it. And this can have dire consequences, I mean, with regard to the operation of a building or a facility. It, it can be down, you can you can lose, you know, a whole building for, for days at a time. Another key problem is, and this is general across our industry, in that the teams involved in providing the construction, providing the, the, the project for your clients, they normally have no contractual interest in the life cycle costs. It's, it's not their responsibility. So they want to build it, they want to get paid for it, and they want to move on to the next one. And, um, you know, the, the, the cost of the fuel afterwards and how you, how you maintain it is, is in most cases, unless, it is, unless it's a design and build or a build operate transfer type project, they, they don't have an interest in, in, in looking at that. Uh, again, for your, for you and your teams, this, uh, you know, a master asset register. Again, you may get one from the mechanical, one from the electrical, one from the plumbing, the BMS and so on. Um, but normally, is there an integrated system with, with everything in it? And, um, you know, even a medium sized project can have hundreds, if not thousands of, of records that need to be identified. Where is it? What is it? How has it been installed? How has it been tested? What are the operating requirements? What are the maintenance requirements? So on. So when was it installed? When does the warranty run out? All of these things are vital to you and your team running running uh, running a facility. A key problem for, for us as well is it's very rare to see input from professionals like you at the early stage. In other words, at design stage, or certainly pre-construction. In other words, when a contractor is being brought on board or a subcontractor. Can this building be actually maintained properly, efficiently? Do you have access to, to the equipment? Can you do it safely? All of these things need experts. They need facility management. 
uh, state people to, to, to put that input in at a very early stage. I, I'm working only on one project now, and it's been many years since I've seen another one where that information and, and that expertise was brought in. They do it a lot now for testing and commissioning to make sure the system can be tested and commissioned, but it's rare that an FM expert will be, will be present, and, and that's a big miss. And the overall results of this, as I said earlier, is make it, it makes your life extremely difficult. If you don't know what in, what's been installed, if you don't know how it's been tested, if you don't know what documentation is needed to maintain it, if you don't know its, its, its expiry date and its warranty dates and all that, it is really difficult and expensive uh, to, to, uh, to do your job effectively. So here just is a, is a, a, brief, a very small extract from, a, from an asset register, which I touched on earlier. And this is a very simple one. Um, I mean, but if, if we're involved in a project with our, with our systems, would we, and if, if say if Maximo is involved as the FM tool, well then we, we will build our asset registers and our system to reflect all of the headings in Maximo. And then the team on the site, on the project, they fill in maybe, you know, like you see here, 12 or 15 fields and then the, the FM team uh, will, will come in and, and fill in, and then we can export this directly into Maximo. So it, it makes the, the startup of the maintenance and FM a, a much more efficient, uh, a much more efficient uh, operation. But you can see, I mean, you, you see the project that I will show you later on. I mean, it's, it's an airport and, you know, okay, but there are thousands and thousands of assets there. And, hospitals or even even you know an office building can have hundreds and hundreds of assets that need to be identified need to be tracked need to be traced need to be maintained and have to be disposed of so that's just to give you a, a, a glimpse of, of of what um the amount of data that's required it, it is it is quite staggering really and again just to show you by the time here in this green dot you see this, this is normally when when the people on this call this is normally when you you would get involved but you can see it starts up here, and this can be three, four, or five years. You know, from the time we start here to the time we get here, it has to be specified. Piece of equipment. It's then selected by a contractor or a subcontractor that has been appointed. And at this stage here, at the submittal stage, this is when things can begin to go wrong because um, the contractor wants to change because he can get something cheaper or better or a better deal or whatever. So he has to make a submittal and, and then the, the design team will say, okay, it's approved. Okay, it may not be what was specified. Then it has to be bought and we hope what is bought has been what was approved. <laughs> then it has to be installed and we hope what was procured is installed and installed in the right position. And again, amazingly many times, particularly with smaller items like pumps and fan call units, um, the wrong unit is put in the wrong place uh, and that, that does not become apparent until afterwards. Then eventually it's tested and commissioned, and ultimately, with some paperwork, it's handed over to you. But you can see in this cycle and in this time frame, the, the difficulty of maintaining the thread of information that needs to be needs to be handed over. It is there's many cases where information can get lost, can get misaligned or misconstrued or or miscopied from Excel or something, and that happens frequently. And you end up with something that's not what you think it is. That's a problem. Now, if we move on to how you know we like to operate, we, you know we want to get away from the, the, the filing cabinets and the, and the the, the 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 files and the okay the rolled up drawings don't normally happen much more anymore, but, but you do see them. We want to get to the and we do we, we provide a cloud solution where you use tablets, phones, you use QRs or barcodes or RFID. Um, and of course, with the with the cloud, we we can then uh, automatically in real time back this up to a server in your client's office, so that if 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 we go out of business or you have a problem with us, well then you have the actual up to date information in, in in your control. And this is even important during the construction phase that the information is, in our opinion, should be held by the by the client, and and, and not not by the construction team. So that, that is that is a, a graphic of, of our of our toolkit. Now moving on to the to a digital way, we, we looked at the old way as we call it, the traditional way. This is this is the digital way, and now particularly in the in the UK, uh, uh, unfortunately due to some very serious incidents there in the last couple of years, 
the government in the UK are, are now looking, and, and the Irish government and others are looking at how do we ensure that information, when it's generated at the beginning of the design process, from even from the concept design, how is it generated? How is it transmitted? How is it processed? And, and vitally, how, how does that ha- how does it survive into the handover and into the operation and life cycle and the maintenance of a building? And, and this is what they're calling the golden thread. And, and this is where the digital uh, means of, of, of operating and con- connecting and controlling and managing this information is so important. Without a digital system, this is almost impossible to, to, to achieve this level of, uh, of data integrity. So, and, and this, is, this is what we're looking at. This is what we're, we're, we're offering. And the key approaches to digital is in our opinion here so there's many of them and we can we could and do spend many hours talking about them but we don't have that much time today in our opinion in today's building the data is almost as important as the physical building in other words yes we have a lovely building that the architect has made very pretty and all the rest of it hopefully it's functional but the data to run it to manage it to dispose of it to demolish it that is 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 key and and this data becomes the link the key link from design and construction into maintenance and facility management and life cycle management. So this 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 link is, is, is vitally important. And on paper, very, very difficult to, to have this, uh, this good link. And the data that we provide, as I mentioned briefly earlier, and other tools like us, it's not just us, of course, um, we, we are the feedstock for, for the FM tools like Maximo and, and Archibus and others that when we collect this data during the design and construction and handover phase, that we can feed this information a lot of the time automatically, uh, you know, via XML or other tools or APIs, we can we can hand this information over and, and put it into tools that make the, because I have seen projects where an FM company comes in almost when the project has been handed over and they spend months, sometimes six, eight, nine, 10, 12 months going around collecting data. Uh, copying nameplates of equipment, taking down ceilings. W- what have we got up here? They don't know. And, and this means the start of your work is late. The digital, you know, it's not all about digital, but this is key. Clearly our business is, is very people oriented and correctly so. But if you have a digital system, it enhances your processes and your procedures. And it makes your staff, the life of your staff easier. So you can set up these systems, you can manage them much more efficiently if you have a digital system. But it's key that these systems are are incorporated into the design and the construction and the handover phase. Now, again, you know, experts and professionals that are on this call, uh, you you can help here because it is, it is, you can advise your clients. If if a lot of your clients will have new buildings or are planning new buildings, well, you know, you can say to them, look, you must ensure from the very early stage when you hire professional people, they've got to manage uh, the information in this manner. And if, if, if that happens, there is a lot of training, a lot of education that needs to be done, but the benefits are huge. If you have a digital system and a proper digital system, it really encourages offsite fabrication. Uh, and this is key um, to, to the future of our business as well, as you'll see a little bit later. Uh, the more we can make off-site, the better the quality, the better the timing, the scheduling. Um, so th- that, again, is, is, is a key consideration. If you have a digital system, it, it, you can use a common data, and, you know, just the CDEs. It's just a, com- a, a simple way of saying that on a project, everything has a key identifier, and it's called the same thing for everything. So if Noel has a, a pen and it's di- this pen, then it's, it's PEN 101. And there's only one number PEN on the project called NOL 101. You know, I have seen projects, I'm sure you have, and particularly where there's a phase one, two, three, where there's equipment on phase one is called AHU 001. And on phase two, it's AHU 001. I mean, it may make sense to the designers and the installers, but it certainly doesn't make sense to you or your staff. So we've got to change that. And we need to ensure the correct and detailed specifications are provided at at the front end. In other words, what's required, when is it required, how is it required, who provides it and who approves it. And again, there is a a failure sometimes that the handover documentation is 
not very well defined from a from a specification or a contract point of view. And because of that, then there are perhaps shortcuts made. And if, if, if some of or all of this is done, there is a considerable life saving across the uh, across the facility lifetime. That, that, that's for sure. So I mentioned some of these There are key changes underway and there are key changes coming. And um, and the first one I see is the, the whole area of product commoditization approach. Now, uh, you know, they say make buildings like we make cars. Well, let's get closer to that. We will never make buildings the way we make cars, but we can certainly do a lot better than we do right now. And part of this would be the offsite fabrication, and that is increasing. In fact, you know, again in the UK now, you know, entire houses are, are being fabricated in, in, in sections offsite, uh, and this and this will continue. The use of on-site robotics and drones, etc., and this again, I've seen this with my own eyes in many cases. It, it is it is uh, it is happening uh, slowly, but it is happening. Uh, the whole area of energy, climate change, sustainability that I mentioned later. That certainly uh, is, is, is a big changer. There is increased use of technology, but it's slow and it's not filtering down to, to the lower levels in our industry, you know, to the, to the smaller companies, perhaps. Now, and there is a new breed of construction companies. I, I put this in here because I was, I was chatting to one of the major uh, um, companies in, in, the, in the social media page area recently and they were saying recently they built a facility for 60,000 staff in the US. Um, they, they built it in the computer, they prefabricated virtually everything and then they put it together on site in record time. And what they said to me was, well look now, if we can do this for 60,000 people, we can do it for 600,000 or for a city of 6 million. It's only a matter of scale. So new companies are going to come in and they're going to eat some of these very large construction companies uh, for breakfast. They will not be able to compete. And on here, unfortunately, my technology went a bit off the page. Uh, 3D printing will, will make an impact in some, in some areas. So on to briefly, because I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of the time, uh, I'll touch briefly just on BIM and digital twins. Uh, it, it is an important player in the field. Uh, BIM, uh, in, in our view, is we, we fully support it and we fo or we're fully behind it. However, it's not been, in our opinion, again, it's not been fully understood or fully utilized. Uh, again, the, the, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing and fire services are normally not fully integrated into the BIM. They, they may be clash detected in risers and so on, but the, but the, the distribution is, is where the problems arise. And on many projects I've worked on, the, the BIM is not, is not up to date with the construction. But if you do have a good BIM, well, then it makes decision making uh, much easier at an earlier stage. You can you can run all these what what if scenarios, um, and and as I mentioned, offsite fabrication with bathroom pods and full AHUs, the air handling, and this can all be done offsite. Now, digital twin is the latest kind of one. Again, it's it's the analogy I, I explained earlier, where the project and we would we would fully support this can be fully built in in, in the computer complete with the 3D modeling, the class detection, the scheduling, logistics, the costing, the energy analysis, infrastructure, including, you know, flood prevention, people movement, car, all of that can be done. And the what if scenario planning, if we turn the building this way, we shade it this way, we put a green roof on, all of that can be run, costed, planned out, scheduled. And then in our opinion, what should happen is companies should do this and then go to bid. It will take longer at the front end, but you'll save multiples of money and multiples of months at the back end. So, but again, from the, from the members on this call, you know, I, I've spoken to many uh, FMs over the last number of years and they have a mixed view on BIM. I would be very interested in your opinion because, you know, people are saying, oh yeah, BIM is a good idea, but it doesn't really help us in our day-to-day -day job. You, us being the FM team, uh, because sometimes and many all of the data that you need is not in the bin they're, they're, all the models may be in there and the equipment may be in there and the id may be in there but the backup data needed as to how you maintain it is, is perhaps held somewhere else so again i really like your, your your background or your opinion on that please before i move into a quick uh, overview of one of our one of our live projects this just shows you some of the models, modules that we can provide. The one we're talking about today really is here is the operating and maintenance. 
but all of these modules when they're used together feed into the op like you need the asset management the document management the submittals because here a lot of the data that's needed later is, is can be captured at a very early stage the testing and commissioning you know the, the rfis fire and life safety plays a key part so all of this during the project feeds in here which hopefully will give you and your team a, a better set of data to, to, to do your work uh, efficiently and effectively. Uh, so now if I just skip out of this here for a second, if, if I can, um, and, and go back into, uh, into Teams, I hope I can do that. Uh, where did it go to? Uh, here it is. Uh, so I just need to quickly uh, change here and go into an online, uh, where is my, here it is here. So I hope you can see this. Yes. Nora, can, can you see this okay? Yes, I can see that clearly. Okay, okay, very, very quickly. I won't spend much time here because we have five minutes before the Q and A's. This is, a, this is not this project, sorry, this one. Uh, this is a project that we have permission to show. Uh, not all of it, part of it, and it's it's the new Bahrain airport, which op opened uh, about six months ago. We're still working here because uh, the, the, the new airport is giant to the old airport, and the old airport is now being brought up to the same standard as the new airport. I won't go through everything here. They're, they're using six of our modules, including you know progressive inspections, uh, a whole closure system of ceiling, floors, walls, partitions, a snagging system, you know, to to, to with the client with with ADPI. Uh, the whole area of testing and commissioning, they have a delay alert notification, which is basically for the commercial people. But the one I'd like to show you is, is, is how they've, they've, they're, they're approaching their, the structure of their O&Ms and, and document handover, uh, which, which we built with them, with, with, with the contractor, which, which is a, a joint venture between a Dubai company and, and a Turkish company, and with, their, with uh, the Bahrain Airport Corporation Facility Management Team. And this is one of the projects where the, the FM team was involved at an early stage, and certainly it, it has benefited from that. So with our system here, you, you basically have a folder structure, which is common, I, I think, you know, to, to most of you here. In the middle pane here, you have the data, like an Excel sheet. And then by, by double clicking on any of these here, you, you basically have the individual record record here on, on, on the right hand side. And these records can be as, as complicated or as simple as you wish. They can have mandatory fields, drop down lists and, 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 and workflows and permissions and so on and so forth. I won't go into that right now. But just to give you an example, I mean, they, they broke it into three parts. They wanted general documentation that was required for handover. They wanted the final completion documentation identified. And they wanted, uh, at the last count, it was 89 O&M manuals. And, and they wanted a common structure across all of those. And these, some of these then have, have subdivisions, if you like, of I won't go through them all, like the handover and closeout procedures, the closeout room data sheets, service agreements, property surveys. You know, this is probably one of the better ones I have seen for how information should be collated, managed, and handed over. And this started from a, this started maybe three and a half years ago. So, and it goes down into all of the, down onto the taking over certificates. Then you have all the design data, you know, the permits, uh, from civil defense, local authority, occupancy, operating, all of these things, because certainly in the Middle East and a lot of jurisdictions now, the, the construction companies will not get their practical completion certificates unless this documentation is certainly at a certain level, which is which I think is another way forward. Then into the punch list, the, the fire engineers reports, the sign-offs, the records, the software licenses, door keys, which I mean, there's 4,800 rooms on this on this airport. So the management of the keys from construction locks to handover locks and master locks and all that is very important. And they're going to use our system uh, during the defects liability period management as well. And then for the final uh, completion, you know, they have the, again, partly rep uh, replicated from the previous one, but they wanted to make sure that there was other items in here for test certificates, insurances, pest controls, final completion certificates, final checkings, you know, the final cleaning uh, and all of the final certificates. And then each one of the O&M manuals will have this structure. The 15, now, 
this can vary. I mean, we've got Sipsy in the UK, we've got Ashray in America, we've got Bespoke. This is a, a bespoke one, it's a mixture of both. And um, and just to show you a couple of them, you know, here here is like the equipment schedule um, and just a part of it. Um, so they have a master asset register, um, which should show up here. And it, it, it covers like the building, the floor, the zone, the room, the discipline, the main, you know, barcodes which they're using all of that sort of stuff and then any files or drawings attached and because it's a database then for ease of use by the fm team they want that broken down by discipline so again they just if the mechanical guys want to click in here the electrical girls want to click in here they just get what they want for the electrical or the it or the plumbing or or the baggage handling or wherever that happens to be then you have all the spare parts you have the testing and commissioning the operating the maintenance the yeah, as-built drawings, this is a very important part. I think that they're going to have seven or 8,000 uh, as-built drawings here. And again, you, you see that it's it's uh, it's broken down. Into, and, the, and these are all kind of drop-down lists, which you can choose, mechanical, electrical, civil, structural, and the drawing numbers, the status, and and, and then each drawn, drawing is attached, in this instance, as a PDF. In another section, uh, accessible to only some people, it will be available as a DWG because the DWG, as you know, can be updated. Um, and then again, because they wanted, for ease of reference afterwards, they wanted it, you know, per discipline. And again, we can break this down and we have broken that down for them. And something I didn't mention, but because obviously we use digital, another, another key part of that is we can generate live reports. Uh, and this is here, I think they have 17 reports. They have dashboard reports, you know, which, generate in real time so to, to certain people only of course who have access to it so you want to want to see um what they wanted was i think a rolling from memory a rolling four-day average of their of their inspections you know green means there's been some change over the four or five days red means there's been no change and then they wanted a, a, a if you like a dashboard and they only wanted data here we can provide this in bar charts pie charts trend charts wherever you want but here you see the 50 almost fifty-eight thousand and there's still 50% not, not complete. So that's a flavor of, of, uh, of, of, of what we can do. And uh, again, this, this, um, on this project, just before I close it up, the, the, the client there, our client, uh, the contracting company, the JV, he is using um, this system every day, multiple times per day. Uh, Hassan uh, and, and his, 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 his QA manager, Terence, they use this with their, with their subcontractors, with their own construction managers, and they say, if it's not in Butterfly, which our system is called, then it, it, I don't believe it. So is it in there? Show me how it's been done. Show me that those rooms are complete. And it, it is the one source of truth, if you like, that they're using. So. I'd like to uh, like to thank you for 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 your time and your interest. Hopefully, I will be able to answer any 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 questions uh, you you may, you may have. And uh, I think with that, um, I'm I'm complete. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Thank you, Noel, for the interesting session. So now, if anyone has any questions, kindly write down your questions in the chat box. I'm sure Noel would be pleased to answer them. If I can, I'll try. <laughs> if, if, I don't, if I don't know the answer, I'll go, I'll go find it from some of my colleagues. But, uh, but yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested, hopefully, in, in, uh, in, in some feedback, yeah. All right, so, um, um, okay, so I'll just read the question from the chat box. Uh, I'll just yeah. I'll just did the question to you, yeah, no? Sure, sure. Right. Um, okay, so the first question would be from um, Mr. Sudipta Sengupta. Right. Yeah. So the question is. Um, in project management, do you maintain CPM and how relevant it is in recent scenario where we have IoT and other available apps? So this, uh, there, there are two questions actually. So the second yeah. question is, does CPM also covered in recent tools? Uh, yes, and, and basically, uh, you know, I'm, 
not here to pitch our system, but we, we can replicate any system that people use presently on paper or soft copy. Uh, you know, we own our software, so we can build any modules like, like CPM or health and safety or quality. Regarding the second part of the question that Mr. Gupta asked, um, IoT is, is not something that we would, uh, we would incorporate the data associated with the IoT system, but the IoT is normally standalone, a bit like the building management system. But the information that's needed to maintain it or, and how it was installed and how it was tested and the drawings associated with it, <clears throat> that information would be incorporated in our system. Okay, so um, thank you know, for the, the answer. <laughs> okay, so the next question is from um, Mr. Sohail. Uh, okay, Mr. Sohail, I just need to inform you that uh, yes, the MyFM Summit mobile app is available on Google Play Store and Apple App Store. Yep. So his question is, um, what are your thoughts on the India FM market? Is the industry mature to take this technology? So how should from? Oh, okay. So this this question is from so how so how. Yes, sir, sir. So yes, um, we we as a company have not have not yet worked uh, on the in, on Indian projects. Of course, from working in the UAE, uh, I have many Indian friends, and 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 they give me information on on projects. And I have other friends and companies uh, using technology on projects in India. But we 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 are say working in on projects in the Philippines uh, and and some other like also in Egypt. And, and the industry there is not so far developed as say in, in say Hong Kong or, or UK or Malaysia um, or Ireland. But what we offer is, is not so much, uh, we don't offer an FM solution, we offer information to allow an FM solution to be implemented. <clears throat> so it is more, um, can, can we get involved in projects in India to collect, collate, manage, and hand over the data that's suitable for FM. But I know that the Indian market is a huge construction market, and um, um, there must be a, an, an amazing amount of opportunities for offering FM. But what we offer is a system to allow FM to be easily implemented. I hope that answers your question, Mr. Hale. Okay, thank you, so how for you for the questions. Okay, next question is from Dr. Fahang Shafi. What shall we do for FM in all buildings? Yeah, very good question, Doctor. Um, I didn't mention it in, in my in my uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> we we do offer a service, uh, and we have used this a number of times, where we will go into an older building, and sometimes not that old, maybe the building has been only completed two or three years, and <clears throat> we will do two things. We will take the information that's already there, be it in paper, soft copy, soft copy CDs or wherever, and we will digitize it in the butterfly system. So in other words, we, we will put in the information that you have got. And by doing this, it's not always easy or possible on paper. But once we do this, we can identify what's missing. So we can tell you that in many cases we have seen at best 70% of the information is there, sometimes only 50%. So we take what you've got. We can even uh, pro provide a survey, if you don't already have it, of your assets. But I'm sure that that may be there already. But we will build it in the system. We will tell you what you have. We will tell you what you need. And we can go find what you need as well, because most of this information now can be got on the web or from suppliers. So our system can be used in old buildings. It does take a little bit more to get the data and to, and to put it into a structure, but it can be used, yes. Okay, so um, before I proceed to another question from a different um, person, yes. so I just, I just read the, the following question from Mr. Uh, Dr. Fang. What about CAPEX and OPEX as part of submittals? Uh, Yes. Um, well, OPEX is not really not normally a, a function of, of the projects that we deal with, because, as I said earlier, um, unless it is design and build or, or a, a build operate one of those type of projects, the, the OPEX uh, is not normally um, uh, facilitated. But the CAPEX, uh, yes, 
Um, but the, the budgeting as such, or the management of the budgets, again, it, it is normally, if you like, an accounts function or, or a commercial function. Um, but because we manage data, and, and you know, we're, we're working on projects now for you know for vending machine operators and and and, and for universities to, to manage enrollment and so on, we manage data. So once we know what a client wants and how that data needs to be structured and what workflow that data needs, we simply build that. That's the, one of the key benefits of our system is we don't force anyone to use an out of the box solution. We sit down with our clients. What do you want to do? What's a use case? We want to start here. We want to finish here. Who needs to do it along the way? Who needs to approve it? And we can manage that process. So really, I would be happy to talk to anyone if they have a specific requirement. And by the way, that's how a lot of our new modules were added was by our clients asking us, can you do this, Noel? Can you do that? And yes, we can. We own the software. We find out what our client wants. We can do it. I hope that answers the doctor's question. Yeah, thank you. Right, so thank you for the question. And next question is from IR Daniel Sim. Uh, there are two questions from him. Um, is your is your FM system manually input, or is there any analytical engine which is linked to IoT devices to provide active FM monitoring system? Um, I, I'll take I'll take that in the reverse order. Um, no, we, we we as of we have looked at this issue. Um, uh, in other words, can we take information from an IoT system or can we take information from a, B, a BMS system? We could do it. We, we've decided um, not to do it. Um, so I think the answer is is no. We 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 don't uh, um, do do that. But when he asked, is our system manual? It, it is manual in so far as the input is done manually but we, we, we do have you know um, bulk upload via Excel imports and all that or, or, or via we can do it uh, through a database in other words if, if we got at uh, 5,000 drawings in, in an Excel sheet with with the drawings with the actual drawings we don't have to upload those one by one we simply write a script and, and it's, it's uploaded. It takes a little bit of time to write it, but then it's uploaded in a couple of seconds. So, so, um, but no, just for clarity, we, we do not take signals or information from an IoT, no. I see. So the next following question is, is your FM system an out of the box or fully customized? Um, I, I suppose not, not, not to be, uh, Pedantic, <clears throat> but we're, we're probably not an FM system per se. Like we're not a Maximo, or we're not. A, but but, but um, we have, if you like, out of the box modules. But none of them are without some level of of, um, of um, customization. Not customization, but in order to make them work for your project. In other words, we we, we could give you an asset register out of the box. But the, virtually every project has slightly different requirements. So. Yes, it, it is out of the box, but you may, you or we may need to make some changes or add in some additional fields that you may need. So it's partly out of the box, but say on bigger projects like a hospital or an airport, it, it is mostly uh, pre-configured. But just to give you an example, on that airport in Bahrain, which is 1.3, excuse me, 1.3 billion dollar US dollar project, um, we, we, we set that up in eight weeks. Uh, from and we came in one and a half years after the project had started, so a lot of our time was in importing existing information. So you know, a, a medium-sized project, four weeks, we, we can have the entire project up and running. But we do offer out-of-the-box solutions with minimum changes. Yes. All right. Thank you, I R Daniel, for the questions. Next question is from Dr. Pang. Okay, there's another question from Dr. Pang. Is the scale of the facilities important for the services of explained system? Uh, no, no, it's not. Um, the, we have worked on very small projects and, and clearly we have worked on very large projects. Um, so the scale is not a problem. What, what, what can be an issue uh, on the smaller projects is that, you know, obviously we, we have a minimum cost, you know, uh, but if it's a bigger project, well then the, the actual val value of our offering as a percent, as a as a fraction of a percent, 
is lower on a bigger project and it, it may look a bit high for a smaller project but the scale or the data there is no lower scale and there's no upper scale it's, it's simply a matter of cost Thank right, you, so Dr. The, the next question is uh, from Sudipta in infrastructure projects are you focusing more in PPP, PPP module includes boot, BOOT, BOLT, or any other module for financial viability for IFM industry. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very good question. Um, uh, for us, uh, the, the type of project doesn't matter. You know, the, the, the contractual arrangement, be it build, operate, own, transfer, a BOT, or PPP, or, or you know, private partnerships, or whoever. In a design and build or, or, a, or a PPP type project, it is more important clearly to have the running cost and the life cycle cost managed. So our system is more actually more suitable to those types of projects because it's in the, the, the entity that's put together, the special purpose vehicle that's put together to deliver these projects, they are responsible for the energy and the running costs and all these other things. So to get this information, to manage it, to make sure it is correct when they start operating is vital. But the type of project does not matter. I mean, I've unfortunately gone to meetings and, oh, you know, have, have you worked on an airport before? Have you worked on an aisle? I mean, our system is, is a software system. It doesn't know if it's a chemical plant or a nuclear plant. We deal in data. So, and our experts, are, we, we have experts in, in software, but we, but they're in the background, no disrespect to software people. But the people who go out to meet our clients are either engineering people or facility management people. So we know the business and, uh, and I think that's key because it's not just about software. You have to know what you're talking about. But the type of contract, the type of project, to us, it doesn't matter. And thank you for, th thank you for that question. Thank you for the question. Next question is from Akmal. Is your system integrated directly to Beam software? Again, a very Akmal, a very, very good question, and I'll answer it honestly. Um, we, we have a software roadmap, and uh, okay, COVID has has knocked it a bit off off track. Um, but as part of that, we have a Beam strategy. Uh, and we're, we're firm believers in BIM. However, it is our judgment, rightly or wrongly, uh, that BIM right now is not sufficiently used on su enum enough projects to make it worth our while. So what we've done is we, we have, our engine is ready for BIM and we, we will probably use an open source BIM viewer that, that can take any any IFC file or any other type of file, and we can, we can put it into our our our, our uh, system, and can be accessed through our computer or through our tablets. So we haven't pushed that button yet. We have done it in 2D, if you like. So we, we can do all our inspections now on a tablet in 2D with pin drops and so on. We'd need about two or three months to 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 have it fully BIM enabled. But in our opinion, there is a, enough work out there for us at, let's call it the lower level, where BIM is perhaps not being used to the full extent. So I, I'm afraid we have not yet gone to 100% the BIM route. We will, we believe in it, but in our experience, BIM has not been extensively used to make it worth our while. I hope that answers your question, Akmal. All right. Thank you, Akmal, for the question. So, um, is there any other questions? Right? So, okay, if not, then, um, okay, this, okay, one more question. That's, it's yeah. from Muhammad Ashrafi bin Mansour. How flexible this system on the 3D design if there are massive renovation and update? Is the record of all structure still can be tracked? For building analysis, if there are an issue of structure failure, cause course of sorry failure cause cause of asset faulty. Sorry about that. Um, well, yeah, that's that's partly tied up with 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 the BIM question. Um, what 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 we find, Mohammed, is that um, even on projects where BIM is being used, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, 
um, that the, the actual day-to-day -day work out on the site of, of recording what's happening on the coal face, literally out, out on the mucky field or out on the building site, um, BIM is, you know, on a tablet can be done and is being done in a small way. What we tend to do is we, we can set up our system to, to check uh, in, you know, on a tablet or a phone what is being installed. You know, uh, you can it can be BIM structures, it can be cladding, it can be the installation of, of, of MEP equipment. And, and we can track we can track all, all, all of that from from the time it's 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 designed and, and specified and so on. Um, so but what we do not have right now is 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 to link that automatically to the BIM. Um, a lot of the time our clients don't want to do that uh, because they they again as I mentioned earlier their BIM unfortunately is lagging the actual construction process. So they, they want to know what's happening, they want to record what's happening and later either through redlining or, or through a pint cloud survey they adjust the BIM to the finished product that's out in the field. So right now um, I know uh, another question that's been asked but we do not have a direct link from our butterfly modules to a, a BIM, uh, to a BIM, like BIM 360 or something like that. We do not have that direct link, but there is an intermediate phase. I hope that answers your question, Mohamed. All right, thank you for the question, Mohamed. The next question is from Norman. Do you believe that your system have an impact on the, on the timeframes of a build or refurbishment project? I, for example, to shorten the time taken due to improve management of the project? Uh, good morning, Norman. The uh, answer to your question is absolutely yes. Um, I, I, you know, I may not have mentioned it during my presentation, but in, in advanced economies in the construction industry, there is at least 30% wastage. This has been proven, you know, with, Ed, with Egan and other people in the UK that did all these reports. They say 30% rework. What's that mean in reality? It's, it's a nice way of saying 30% waste. You might as well go down the, the, the back of the field and just burn your dollar notes or your pound notes. So yes, definitely um, a, a system like ours and others like ours can, can clearly minimize mistakes. And, and that is what rework is. It's something that has been done at least twice. Why has it been done twice? It's not because there are bad contractors or bad trades people. It's because they got the wrong information at the wrong time and they put the door on the north wall instead of the south wall. So it has to come out of the south wall and go back into the north wall. And this is very expensive and time consuming. And a lot of this gets caught up in what's called the, the snagging. Basically snagging is putting right what was, what, was, what was designed wrong or implemented wrong or whatever. So if you can minimize that, Yes, you save money and you save time. All I would say is, Norman, is that the the adaption of a, of a system like ours at the earliest stage, this is key as well, it, to come in early, set up the processes, set up the procedures, set up the workflows. This minimizes the, the, the issues I've just raised and clearly where, where it's used, it has, a, it has a, a major advantage in minimizing cost and delays. In a new build, and certainly in, in an existing build, yes. I hope that answers your question, Norman. Thank you for the question, Norman. All right, so the next question is, aside from documentation management, which you have shown us through, how is this system going to provide input during design stage? Yeah, we, we, would, we would clearly like to be involved at the design stage, and, and we are and have spoken to a number of, of designers and project management companies. And we, we may well, you know, form alliances with some of them because they see the advantage. So how, you know, yes, we, we did focus on the handover of documentation today, but before documentation can be handover, handed over, there is all these other steps that it needs to go through. One of the key areas we see is in the designers, rather than using Excel, that they use our database, say, for their asset management and information. In other words, they put in their information that they need for design phase. This is then passed through in the bid phase. And the bidders fill in more information, you know, on the same form, which has got blank fields that need to be filled in. 
So then it's procured, then it's tested. And all of this information, so you have this golden thread from the beginning. It was specified here. It went through these changes and our system has a full audit trail. So you can go back at any time and see who changed what. It's not easy to do that with Excel and, and, and emails. So we, we can play a key role in, in managing that data from, from its inception. But more importantly is then when it moves beyond the design phase, like our inspection modules, our quality modules, our health and safety modules, our closure systems. I mean, how many times, well, I have seen that false ceilings are closed, partitions are closed before it's ready because somebody orders it to be done and it's not recorded what's behind there. Has the insulation been done? Has the fire stopping been done? And, and we have a module to, to manage all the static fire and life safety, which is a huge task on, on, a, on, a, on a medium or large project. So, yes, we can help with, with the design management of, management of that data, but moving into the, the difficult bit, if you like, out, out on the site, there are many of our modules which greatly assist in, in, in delivering the project correctly and in ensuring that you and your, your professionals get the right information at the end. I hope that answers your question. All right, thank you for the question. Okay. I think there's no other question. So I have a question for you, Noel. Please, yes. Um, okay, so why the lack of construction information can be a bad news for the facility user, especially during a crisis or emergency in a facility? Yes. Again, that that is you know that that is one of the one of the key issues that we that we come across. Um, I mean, we one of your previous participants asked about you know existing buildings and so on. We we have gone to many buildings and we would say, well, look, they have a problem. Well, show me show me your O and M documentation. And at, at, at best, it's it's minimal. So if you have correct documentation, if you have as built drawings are accurate. And if, in particular, if you have this cause and effect, you know, analysis, and 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 again, and this is linked to a to a proper asset register, proper asset management system. Now, if something goes wrong, before you go out and, and see it, the water pouring down, and you know, the fifth floor, you can at least get out the drawings, or you can look at it on your screen and say, look, okay, it's there. But if, if it's there. We know that this pump or this unit or this uh, piece of control valve, this is linked to something else. And if this continues, it's going to shut off the fire alarm system or it's going to close down the elevators or it's going to do, you know, it's going to start the pump in the basement, you know, wherever. And if that information is not there, well, then your team first to find the problem and two, how to fix it. I mean, where is the where do I take down this wall or this ceiling or do, do I dig up this floor? Um, so at, at least if you have the accurate information, you as a professional can make a plan. This is how I'm going to fix it. I need to do one, two, three, four. I need to do A, B, C, D. I need to inform that the manager on the foot fifth floor. I need to tell the hospital administrator he can't let people into the emergency department or whatever. And we've seen all of this. So if you have the right data, you have a much more informed decision making process. Quicker to, quicker to find it, quicker to fix it and most importantly, quicker to have a happy client again. Yes, thank you. Thank you thank for you. the answer. Yes. <laughs> All right, so, um, okay, there's one more question for me. It's sure. just that I, I've, I've written the question here. Yes. Um, Beam and your systems are seen as expensive at the beginning of a building's life, but do they reduce overall cost of the building over its lifetime? Can they demonstrate value for money for the client? Um, again, that's a, it's a very good question. One of the challenges we find is when we go in to pitch uh, to a client. Um, sometimes there's a there's a, a misunderstanding or sorry, a lack of knowledge as, as to why people would want would want a system like this. I mean, you know, I get well. Look, we've we've always done it this way. We don't we don't need fancy computers and tablets. You know. I've, I've got a big pair of boots and I can go out and, and kick people in, in, into, into doing the job uh, into doing the job correctly. But no, I mean, to, to, add, to, to give a, a return, an ROI, return on investment uh, uh, answer correctly, 
it's it's almost impossible because what you need to do is you need to build one building using a system like ours and another identical building with the same team not using it and of course no one's going to do that so all you can do is, is is speak to these people because they know these professionals these construction people they know that there's a problem They're, they don't want to admit it because if you admit it that causes other problems because now i've admitted a mistake so then I'm going to, my other competitors are going to jump on the bandwagon and say, well, you've caused me a delay. I want more money. I want an extension of time. So nobody admits mistakes. Um, so, but if you, if you look at, as I said, 30% wastage on typical projects, uh, which it can be a lot more than that, by the way, people know there's an issue. People know that money has been wasted. So, and the, the cost of our system in the overall scale of a project, even a small project, is tiny. Now, granted, people don't want to write a purchase order. They don't want to write the check or do the transfer. But companies who have people in, in, in position like quality managers or health and safety people or even you know the, the, the leaders, the project directors and so on, they, when they see the value and they know the value, particularly from a previous project, they know that it will help them do their project correctly. But in doing that, there's an indirect effect. And that is that it helps the client, the ultimate client, the owner, the operator of the facility, or even if they sell on the building, which is another issue because, but if you sell a, a building now, certainly in some jurisdictions, it has to have an energy rating. So, but also, I know that you know estate managers are buying buildings also look at well how has this building been built how has it been tested managed how has the documentation how let, let me see the documentation and this plays a part in what they're willing to pay um so it has it has a key advantage for the constructor and that has a, the indirect effect of enhancing the value of the building and decreasing that life cycle like life cycle cost Definitely, but it's, it's not an easy sell and there's no clear metrics. You can r write out a formula and say, if you do X, here's Y. That that doesn't exist. Right. Okay, I think that's um, enough time that we have for the question Q&A session. Great. All right, thank you, Noel. Okay, no, thank, uh, thank you for organizing it. Thank you and your team. Oh, you, you did a lot of the hard work in the background, so I just I just show up and talk. I'd like again to thank everyone on the call, um, and if any of them have any questions, uh, you know, feed them through you or directly to me. I'm more than happy uh, to answer any any questions or even even about my home country. I'm more more I'm happy to talk about Ireland and uh, it's 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 advantages. Okay, all right. So. Um... Okay, everyone, that's all the time that we have for the webinar today. If you have missed out on today's session, you could always watch the recorded session on my FM Summit app or in our YouTube channel. So don't forget to download the app from Play Store and App Store. So before we end, I wish to inform you that our next webinar will be on autism in workplace and what can we accommodate these unique people in the built environment. This talk is scheduled on the 10th of September, 2021 at 9 p.m. Kuala Lumpur time. So the speakers are from the United States. So please refer to the MyFM Summit app for latest information and updates. So, okay, everyone. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of MyFM, as well as our sponsor, Maxwell CFM International, and our supporting organizations, UFM and TFM Bay, Thank you for joining us today. I'm Noor Sarfina. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye, Noor. Thank you. Thank you, Noor Sarfina. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.